This episode is sponsored by Morgan Stanley at Work. Visit morganstanley.com forward slash assessment to get your free transaction readiness assessment today. Hello and welcome back to Equity, the Tech Crunch podcast, where we unpack the numbers and the nuance behind the headlines. This is Alex, and welcome to our revamped Wednesday show for 2024. On Wednesdays, we are going to dig into critical startup and venture capital news from the week. It's going to be tight. It's going to be quick. It's going to be packed full of information, and we hope that you love it. If you do have comments or feedback on this new format, you can send in notes to equitypod at techcrunch.com if you want but we do always want to hear from you. And with that, let's go. First up, Photo Room is raising. Photo Room, an AI photo editing app, is raising between 50 and $60 million at a valuation of between $500 million and $600 million. Ingrid got this one for us. We're still chasing down all the details, but this is a round to pay attention to. The context here is that apps that let users take, manipulate, and share images have been some of the biggest hits in the world of mobile over the years, and now the influx of AI is cracking open the market for a new wave of startups to step into the ring. Photo Room itself, a startup based in Paris, France, has built a popular AI-based image editing app and API targeting e-commerce vendors, media specialists, and more. Now, 50 or $60 million at a valuation of 500 million to 600 million in a market where funding has been constrained? Well, it seems that AI and Photo Room are still turning heads and getting people to open their checkbooks. One thing I do like about Photo Room is that the company has both a consumer subscription play and business offerings that include an API. The latter of which you actually might have seen out in the wild because the Barbie movie used photo room tech to help fans create their own movie poster. So why does this round matter apart from the fact that we always love a scoop? I'd say two things. One, it's another big, expensive AI round. Yes, we keep seeing these, but we did learn recently that some AI startups are seeing very quick growth. Perhaps that includes photo room as well. And second, this is another French AI startup. So throw in Mistral, which is building foundation models like OpenAI in France, and then Meta's own AI investments in the country, it makes for a very interesting picture. Good for France, good for the EU. Let's see what they build next. Next up, Treasure Financial lays off staff just months after reporting explosive growth. TechCrunch reports that Treasure Financial has laid off 14 employees, which the company confirmed to TechCrunch this week. The company has likened itself to a robo-advisor for businesses. What does that mean? Well, it offers a way for companies to maximize yield on cash, which is something that has become a big deal now that interest rates are far above zero. If you raise $50 million and you put that in the bank, you don't want it to do nothing. You want your money to make some money. Several sources told us that the company's layoffs accounted for 60 to 70% of its staff, a huge number. So why is this interesting news? Well, Marianne Azevedo writes that the company raised $7.5 million last summer, and last August, RIA Intel reported that Treasure Financial had seen that quick growth, and it also grown its AUM, or assets under management, to about $500 million. That's a pretty tidy sum. Now, rising interest rates can be good for fintech companies, as we have seen in recent quarters at Coinbase and others, but maybe if your business is paying out lots of that yield to customers, it's still a tough thing to do. Net interest income can be a great business, but when competition is stiff, maybe it's just not as lucrative as we thought. I'm filing this story under the fintech is hard banner. Scooting along, Tier and Dot, two leading European companies in the realm of e-scooters, have announced that they plan to merge. The transaction is expected to close within about two months of the news. I am not shocked. Many scooter companies have been struggling. Just a few days ago, for example, Super Pedestrian announced that it would shut down, and recently, American scooter company Berg filed for bankruptcy. Even more, Tier itself laid off 22% of its staff last November. Perhaps consolidation in the free-floating scooter and e-bike world was inevitable, but I can't help but wonder what a lot of these mobility companies would have done without COVID. 
Crunchbase reports that Tier was founded in 2018, for example. Did the lockdowns harm these companies more than we thought? Were they wounded when everyone just stayed home for a while? Did that really shake up their business trajectory? I don't know. And I'm not going to make a joke that e-scooter companies were merely a ZERP phenomena, but the number of players in the space is falling as money becomes more expensive and stays there. Closing our startup coverage, two AI hardware stories from the last day. I bet you didn't expect that. First, the $200 Rabbit R1. Now, yesterday, I spent 25 minutes watching a pre-taped presentation from this startup. The gist, as far as I can tell it, is that Rabbit has built a small square piece of hardware that is supposed to be your get things done companion. It's square, it's red, it has a scroll wheel, a small screen, a microphone, and a camera. It's basic, but looks pretty cool. Now, the R1 is not designed to replace your phone. Instead, the company wants to do what your phone does not. Essentially, Rabbit thinks that phones are consumption devices, while the Rabbit R1 will actually help you do things in your life. How does it do that? Well, it uses modern AI technology, including what Rabbit calls a large action model, or LAM, to do stuff in apps for you. I am tempted to buy one of these because it's cheap, it looks super cool, and it's very, very experimental. In a world in which big tech companies only make mass market safe hardware, we're going to have to lean on startups to do wild and wacky things with AI and physical objects. So, Rabbit R1, I'm into it. And second, Humane announces 10 layoffs as its CTO transitions into an advisor role. The other side of what I just said about hardware being hard is that sometimes companies have a bit of a struggle. Now, Humane's CEO and co-founder, Bethany Bongiorno, wrote in a LinkedIn post that, quote, as we begin this new chapter of Humane, going from stealth to consumer facing, we are making some changes to best prepare us for continued growth. And that actually seems to be relatively reasonable because these 10 layoffs were only 4% of the company's overall staff. This was not a slashing, this was a trim. Now, I think Humane's AI pen and its projected user interface are legitimately cool, but the company's device is not yet shipping, as far as I can tell, and will cost about $700 with a $24 per month monthly subscription. So it's more expensive than what Rabbit has built, even if, yes, they are different products and can't be compared one to one, the higher cost does make it harder to pull the trigger on. I might buy a Rabbit R1 just for fun, but I probably won't take a similar flyer on the Humane product until it gets a little bit cheaper. Regardless, onward, hardware startups. Is your company planning to go public or conduct a shareholder liquidity program within the next 18 to 24 months? Did you know that proactively planning for your next private company liquidity event or IPO can help you maintain greater control over timelines and outcomes? Morgan Stanley at Work believes that when you have the right technology and systems in place, working in harmony leading up to a transaction, you can prepare and execute with more accuracy and ease. Visit morganstanley.com forward slash assessment to connect with their issuer strategy and excellence team for a free assessment to find out if your company is transaction ready. Again, that's morganstanley.com forward slash assessment to get your free assessment today. Flip the script and turn that cap table upside down. It's time to leave the world of startups and instead talk about venture capital. And I have two pieces of venture news for you this morning. First up, Founders Fund investor Keith Raboy is moving to Coastal Ventures again. Raboy was at Coastal before he left for Founders Fund back in 2019. And Raboy is well known as part of the PayPal Mafia and is a well-known technology personality. You may have seen his tweets. The move back to Kosla, though, will not displace him from where he lives. Raboy intends to stay in Miami, which I found to be rather notable. Now, this is not going to be the last of the major venture moves that we will see in 2024. Venture capital is going through a shedding phase after it got bigger and more operationally expensive during the last boom. Keith actually talked about that in an interview with TechCrunch EIC Connie Loises. She asked her boy about the market and he said, there's too much capital, there are too many venture firms, it's hyper-competitive. There's no way to drive significant returns unless you have differentiation. And I think you have to differentiate as a person. An interesting thesis, let's see how it works out. Raboy, back to Kosla. And to close, Seedstars Africa Ventures has received a $30 million capital commitment from EIB Global, an arm of the European Investment Bank. It becomes the first major institutional investment for its Pan-African Venture Capital Fund. 
and follows an $8 million commitment from the fund's anchor investor, French private equity firm LBO France. Now, Seedstar's Africa Ventures is looking for between $80 and $100 million in total, so it's not quite there, but this is certainly a big step in the right direction for the fund. And I'm tracking this because it's critical to see how new funds and firms are put together in markets where venture capital has contracted the most. And smaller markets that saw a lot of money during the last boom have suffered the most. I'm thinking Latin America, certain parts of Asia, Africa. So it's great to see more money flowing into where we'll have the most impact. All right, that is our show for this ever so fine Wednesday morning. Coming up on Friday, we have a CES edition of the show. We're going to have High on. We're going to have Kirsten on. We're going to talk gadgets, hardware, startups, cars. It's going to be an absolute treat. So if you're not currently in Las Vegas, don't worry. We shall bring the Las Vegas to you. In the meantime, if you want even more equity between now and our next show, don't forget we are Equity Pod on both X and Threads. I'm Alex over on X. We have two sister shows, Chain Reaction and Found. Chain Reaction, all about the world of crypto and Found digging into those key founder stories. All right, I'm out of here. Bye, y'all. Equity is hosted by myself, Editor-in-Chief of TechCrunch Plus, Alex Wilhelm, and TechCrunch Senior Reporter, Mary Ann Azevedo. We are produced by Teresa Loconsolo with editing by Kel. Bryce Durbin is our illustrator, and a big thank you to the audience development team and Henry Picavet, who manages TechCrunch Audio Products. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.